Uh, first, just like to say thank you uh, to one of uh, my viewers. Uh, his name is uh, Peter Moore, and uh, I've, I appreciate a lot uh, him uh, you doing a shout out. If you're watching this, uh, uh, thanks again, Mr. Moore, for uh, uh, doing that. And I just hope that these videos, you know, help uh, educate you know everyone out there. You know, key thing is just safety. Uh, you know, just so that you know no one uh, hurts themselves, or you know, plus just what to look for in, in a good quality knife so they don't lose money. You know, like so some of my comments like on Benchmade's uh, pivots on that uh, the Osborne axis, how the this, the pivot screw. You know, if you go and look at uh, SP Civilgo's channel, I can't uh, Sue's channel. Another person had a comment in one of her videos that yeah, the Benchmade pivots are like that. You know, it's either a little a little too little tight and it becomes too tight, a little loose and it becomes too loose. And so uh, these things, you know, the an the answers are out there. So now here's the uh, Salus SR11 by uh, Combative Edge. Now uh, Combative Edge is owned by uh, a Mr. Rob Walker. He is a, a Filipino martial arts uh, practitioner and he's been training in that for uh, probably a good maybe the last half of a decade. He had no experience with the designing and the tactical, like how to get into the industry. And it was it says that in the article, I think on one of those uh, Blade articles, that he had met uh, Sal Glesser at SHOT Show, who had then uh, led him in that direction. And Mr. Uh, Walker's first knife was the M1 Combative Edge, which was designed with the help of another uh, uh, knife designer. And um, that knife is very good. Uh, it's, it's very, you know, it's got a lot of neat features, uh, good quality, good quality. Uh, this one, not so much. This one needs um, some work. I mean, it, it has potential, and if Mr. Walker is watching this, you know, uh, understand that uh, Mr. Walker is very nice. Uh, he, he does reply very quick to emails. He does seem to, to you know, kind of care, you know, definitely care about his product. But uh, this one needs some refinement, and I'm going to go over some of the issues with this design. Now, to start with the quality of manufacturing, uh, these uh, all of the combative edge knives are also available uh, through Fox Military Knives uh, Division, um, and the Fox is uh, in Maniago, Italy. All, that's like the the world of uh, Italian knife making. That city is where all the knives are made, and uh, the quality. You know, Italians. You know, you have to look at the cultural aspect. Uh, you know, I'd say how Japanese. Uh, spider codes are good quality because you know uh, Japanese people it's a different culture you have to understand that they when they do something they, they take pride in what they do uh, that you know they feel there's a reputation behind it and it's the same thing with the Italians and so I can say that the the manufacturing of uh, the combative edge knives which is done by Fox is, is very good uh, between uh, the steel quality and 690 uh, cobalt vanadium steel uh, to uh, everything the screws being hardened um, you know, all of it. I mean, this is a lot. You see all that texturing. Uh, okay, to, if you were to take apart, say you just want to open up the knife and just take the knife out, blade out. Uh, because this is the, the male, you unscrew it, the female slides right out and slides in and gets stuck. Like you can't slide all the way out. This pot clip blocks it. So I would say it's, it's almost better to switch it to tip up carry and switch the pot clip around so that you can actually at least uh, deal with that pivot area. Now, one of the design things about this is this has a, a very outdoors kind of survival look to it, especially with the Tonto. The only thing is, this Tonto point, even though the blade is at 4 millimeters thick here, which is very good, as it gets towards here, because of that, that swedge, along with that, uh, that slope down, that drop point, you can see it becomes very thin at the tip. And uh, comparable to, for example, the uh, Bob Lum Tonto, which is only a 3 millimeter blade, you see? So, I mean, that really, now, the Fox Demos video, the tip wasn't that uh, thick either, and it did a good job of prying, but uh, just because the steel is good. But nevertheless, you know, it's kind of a, a false idea of what a Tonto, you know what I mean, can do. Like, it's supposed to, a Tonto, kind of like he removed the purpose of a Tonto by doing that. Like, I mean, that, to me, that kind of sucks. Like, I think that needs revision. If, if you're going to make a Tonto, it should be a Tonto point. Like, it should work as a Tonto. And this is just a Tonto shape. In the end, you just get that shape. Maybe the ease of sharpening, you know, maybe the, those two different edge profiles you can do, but you don't really get the actual pure, you know, like I say, the, the durability of a tanto point. The the biggest flaw about this, and this is why it needs refinement, is this. Listen, can you hear that? Because, and that's because uh, 
you know, this is not like his other combative edge knife where um, the lock bar, because the handle is so uh, curved, uh, which is great for handle ergonomics, this knife really locks your hand in. I mean, for and that might be the idea. A lot of knives are made, uh, like at least, uh, you know, they say, like in uh, some Spyrco knives, like the Civilian, where they say, like, it was made, uh, designed for people who have no experience with knives to be able to f hold the knife and use it properly. And this, I think, definitely falls in that category because uh, this is by far the... The only one I've ever held that locks in, this is better than the hinder in terms of how it locks in your hand. Uh, but, like I said, the problem is, um, because of that extra curve, you know, a lot of force, you know, a lot of pressure goes up here, and you can hear it. So that's, that's going to cause a, an uneven wearing on the back of the blade tang. And uh, this titanium, I don't think is hard, and I, I would doubt that they would go that far as to do that extra process or add tungsten coating there or any of that kind of fancy stuff. Here we have uh, uh, more things to look at. Now first uh, being is that the stop pin is uh, just fitted into both sides. Uh, this is micarta, and this micarta. is of course titanium. Now uh, uh, no, Shane Silbert, he chooses to only use micarta now. And uh, between micarta and G10, there's a lot of debate, and it seems hard to find an answer. In my personal experience, and this is the best I can say, uh, G10 is very durable and uh, you drop it, it, it takes the impact well, you know, a G10 scale is like on this uh, Lum Tonto. Okay, and if you were to, to scrape G10, uh, it, it takes that, that scraping pretty well. Now here's my Lum Tonto, you can just watch. Here, we'll just do this. See this right here? Okay. You see? So in terms of how much it wears, you can see not much of an effect, right? Not that bad. My carta is a mixture of a of a lot of, of a linens or paper uh, can be mixed out. Of, it's like a generalized term just used to say uh, any kind of fabrics um, mixed with like plastics, uh, resins, epoxies. It's like a generalized uh, way of saying that that. Uh, but regardless, there's fabric involved. And so one of the things that people know about my car is it can soak up um, soak up liquids, fluids. Uh, you know, yeah, it's true. I'm on my micarta knives, I'll sometimes you get some of the oil on it and the and the handle darkens. Um, some people have said that my carta gets grippier when wet. That's that's not true. Uh, but you can look at this about my carta. It is see look, it does you see this about my carta? Get the camera to focus. See, it wears off pretty fast. So G10 is still more durable. You can see that little gap now. You see it? Right there. Uh, now the next thing to note too, uh, my carta is, is kind of soft like, to me. Like watch. See if you can see this in camera. You see the bend? See it? So it's uh, far from being as sturdy as G10. So is my, my card a bad? I think my card, uh, I read that it's also a more cost effective. It's a little more uh, cheaper than G10. Now that on past that, so this stop pin is, is notched into that. And that, that pressure there is not that, that extreme. Uh, I can pry it out, unlike my Chizula, which I, I can't at all. And uh, it sits into that, that notch there in the titanium. And I would say that the titanium, the notch in there could be machined more tight. But uh, it's okay. Now, tolerances of fox knives are not so great, because if you can look, see that there's that pivot I was talking about, right? See, it just slides in and out like... Their tolerances are not exactly the, the, the highest. So there's movement in that. Um, now, let's see, this is the main thing that I wish now he would do, okay, because this knife lacks a stabilizer bar, okay, this is going to be hard to show, uh, because the knife lacks a stabilizer bar, uh, you can, when you grip it, you can see there's this gap, and all he has to really do to fix it is, you see that shape, he could do what Trezula did, if he, if he had made this edge right here, move in further down, toward, closer to the lock bar, then I wouldn't be able to grip the lock bar and, and push it in like that. You know, and that's the only thing he really needs to do to re make this design uh, perfect. Because then you wouldn't need the the stabilizer lock bar because the o it wouldn't over travel because of that. 
you know? And then you wouldn't need to worry about the, the stabilizer, a uh, hinder stabilizer, preventing the lock bar from moving that way because of that. And that would make that more secure. Now, so that definitely is something I wish that he would do. Now you can look here, here is the aluminum backspacer, and you can see this is how mine came. So the question is what grade of aluminum? Because aluminum can be very soft, and you can actually see a, a machining error that the person had screwed it in kind of odd before getting it right. Um, and you can see like originally there was a little bit of flakes that came out. How durable are aluminum backspacers? Just depends on the quality of aluminum. What's the quality of this? I don't even know, you know, who would know that? I don't know if Mr. Walker knows and uh, perhaps he could mention that later on because uh, he just said aluminum, he didn't say the, the quality of, and the hardness of it. Then the last thing is the durability of it. You see, if you see the screws, these males go directly into this uh, soft, not very wear resistant micarta, you know? I mean, I mean, the process is just me pushing that in and out is, is shredding off micarta. And then you, you have a screw directly into that. So it's only the thickness of this piece, you know, the only thickness of this piece right here, this actual screw, which, you know, keeps the knife from moving around and, and you know, the knife from going like, you know, breaking or something like that. While on, on a uh, Bablam Tonto, you see these, uh, these females, this is what I was talking about in the other video, um, the females go directly into the stainless steel liners. So when that happens, you have that thickness compared to, for example, this, holding the knife, you know, in place. Look at that. And, and that makes it much more rigid. I mean, if you look at the Bob Tanto, he has, you know, he has this spacer back here, which fell out, which is notched, uh, shouldered, then three shouldered, plus a stop pin shouldered, plus a pivot. I mean, look at all those points of contact and holding the knife together, while on this knife, you know, Hypothetically, a more durable knife, probably or possibly meant for that. Uh, you were talking four millimeter blade, uh, supposedly a Tonto, and then you know you only have the the pivot and those three screws screwed into a backspacer. And so for me, uh, those are things that perhaps he could change uh, or reconsider. Uh, you know, if this is meant for outdoor use, he should up the size of these screws. I uh, definitely up them at least to the to the size of a sage or just one size up would be great because then they would be a little more robust, a little more durable. Uh, definitely at least also specify what kind of aluminum this is. That's just right as knife owners, we need to know. Um, the consumers, we just, you know, it's just common sense. You know, you should list. You know, if Jim Burke's going to say his, his hardware is 440C hardened, uh, times are changing. We need, we want to know what's the quality of this this backspacer that these screws are screwing directly into. Because how many times can you take it apart and put it together before that has a problem? And like I said, then that that's kind of you know I wish there was more tolerances. At least uh, the pivot is not uh, notched. There's a notch or a, sl a slot or slitted. I say that, but it doesn't it spins in place. So and it spins in place on this side too. So there. So then when you're taking the knife apart, uh, again, you, you're going to need to probably take this pot clip off, hold the pivot down, and screw it. And a lot of fox knives are like that. Like They just haven't learned to make the knife, the pivot, not move in place like on a, a Spyderco uh, or a, a lot of knives, actually, good quality knives. They, the, the pivot doesn't move, you know? And if it is going to move, like on a, on a Strider, there should at least be a tool uh, hole there so you can hold that side down and then screw the other side down rather than just have it keep spinning in place uh, especially with the loose tolerances so those are some of the things that he might need to consider uh, modifying uh, last but not least is the pot clip it's fine I mean if you were to use tip up and put the pot clip here it's it's deep but not too deep to where you can't grab it also last note just to make sure FYI when you have screws like this with very fine threading and they screw directly into titanium titanium being soft and you know, too much pressure can strip the titanium uh, very easily at uh, the threading on, on inside the titanium. Uh, this happens on the Boker Cox, it happens on many things. Uh, just be careful, I mean, uh, depending, you know, uh, some companies they'll harden that area or the threading won't be like this. But when you have thin threading and, and, you, and you go into like titanium like that, that can happen. And last thing on design note, one thing that are nice is that these pot clip screws can be used in place of these actual uh, handle screws in case one of these do strip. You know, they do fit, so that's kind of nice. You get a lot of uh, backups for the small screws. And in terms of deployment, because this thumb uh, lug is very sticking out very high and far out there, it's very easy to get access to it 
either hand. <laughs> 